Good morning. I am Marjorie Kumar, your liturgist for today, and I want to welcome everybody here. If you have come this morning seeking, we pray that you will leave having found faith, hope, love, friendship, and Christ. If you are without a church home, we invite you to join our faith community. We welcome everyone here, and anyone here is welcome to come to the coffee hour directly behind here in the after worship. And we do have a virtual coffee hour at 10 a.m. online. Um, we've changed it. It's only the first and third Thursdays, but this is the first, so we, we will be having it. So everyone is invited to that. The link comes from the church. Uh, Saturday, the 15th, I want to remind you that we have an all-church meeting, and I've got a little more to say about that here. Um, we will be meeting in the sanctuary. The purpose of this meeting is to help us discern who we are as a church, who God has called us to reach, and what we are going to do to make that happen. Please come in person if you can so that we can have the best communication possible. And that again is Saturday the 15th at 1 p.m. Um, anyone who is a guest here is welcome to go to the hospitality table in the back. There are some welcome bags there. Look at he's holding them up so you can see them. And if you would like to help at the hospitality table, we do have a sign up for anyone who'd like to help there as we greet our visitors each week. Uh, let me see. The other is today we are celebrating World Communion Sunday. This is the day that we join with followers of Jesus across the globe, celebrating our worldwide connection. For the United Methodists, this is also an opportunity to give to one of our special offerings. World Communion Sunday goes towards equipping future generations of clergy across the globe. If you would like to give at this time, there are details in your bulletin. Or you can ask if you can't find them. Uh, <laughs> let me see. As we continue into worship, let us center ourselves with prayer. Holy God, today we join with your people across the world celebrating that we are all your children from the Americas to Africa, Asia, Europe, and everywhere in between. We have adopted, you have adopted us in love. Today, we give thanks for the adoption. Amen. Let me see where I am. Please rise for the call to worship. Oh, this is fun. Around the world, people gather to break bread and pour wine. Around the world, the broken body is made whole. Around the world, the banquet of God is prepared for the table. Let us worship together. Let us share God's bounty. Amen. The scripture lesson today is Galatians 3, 26 and 28. And I have to say, Pastor, that looks very short for some of your scriptures. I think I can do it, though. We'll try. You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There are male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God.
Friends, as a reminder for any of our little disciples, there are some uh, busy bags um, out in the hallway if they want anything to color with or do some activities uh, during this time. And of course, they're also welcome in the nursery or wherever they're most comfortable. Friends, will you please pray with me and for me? Holy Spirit, you come to us today here at St. Paul United Methodist Church and all around the globe. And Holy Spirit, you are here to speak to us at St. Paul. And you're also speaking a word in many different tongues for all people across the entire globe. So Holy Spirit, may what I say point us toward greater union and intimacy with you, the God who loves and has created and seeks to redeem and restore all of creation throughout the whole world. Amen. Occasionally, I ponder not only what it will be like as we enter life eternal, but who will be there to greet us. And generally speaking, I think most of us picture our close friends and family. We look forward to embracing those whom we love the most. And I tend to believe that's true. Mostly. I believe on World Communion Sunday, there's another aspect of our faith that we have to recognize. A few weeks ago, I found this post on Facebook. The Apostle Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those he martyred. That's how the gospel works. The Apostle Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those he martyred. That's how the gospel works. That um, short passage that Marjorie just read is usually received as a testament to unity in our modern times. It gives us those warm and spiritual fuzzies, how we're all getting along together. There's a bit of a feel-good sentimentality to it. But I'd invite us to read it with some ancient eyes this morning. You wake up every day as a Jew, and in all honesty, specifically a Jewish male. And you thank God that you're a Jew. You have been chosen and plucked from the fire as God's chosen people. In your entire identity is based upon being an upright Jewish person. And then one day you're walking along the city square out for your day-to-day -day errands, picking up the groceries, your milk and bread, and you hear someone reading this letter at the center of town. A letter that tells you that you're just as good as the person who you have done everything humanly possible to stay away from your entire life. The person whom you thank God that you're nothing like. That's the person who is now considered your equal. It's not a feel-good statement of unity. This was offensive. For the past couple of weeks, we've talked about how Nehemiah and Ezra um, needed cultural separateness for the survival of the faith. Well, those days are gone now. 
the survival of the faith doesn't depend on separateness anymore. It depends on drawing the circle wide. It depends on inclusion. Don't worry about the faith being watered down. Worry about making sure there are no barriers to keeping people from the faith. When we actually seek to practice the offensiveness of inclusion, we shouldn't be surprised to see our worst enemy, the town outcast, the neighborhood bully, the arrogant know-it-all walk through our church doors. When we say all are welcome, we better get prepared for God to give us an opportunity to show that we really mean it. Because the, the short passage here shows that God's all has the boldness to actually include all. It includes the drug dealer who was taught how to get in the game since they were a kid. It includes the drug user who thinks getting high is the only way out because life has just been too painful for them. It includes the prostitute who was groomed for the straight streets since she was a lonely teenager. It even includes the pimp who believes his identity can only be found in having people power over people. It includes the gay homeless teen who was kicked out because they had to tell their parents who they were. It includes the transgender woman of color who fears if she just walks outside she'll be assaulted because she knows people like her are the most targeted group in our country for violent attacks. We can have different views about human sexuality, but when specific groups of people are forced on the streets, or are victimized, the church should be a place where they can find safety and not be afraid of continued threat. And it also includes the elderly shut-in who can no longer get by on their own and are dealing with loneliness. It includes, dare I say, even a terrorist who somehow <laughs> still is made in the image of God. And it also includes the victims of the terrorists. And it includes the person who taught the terrorists their warped and absolutely horrific beliefs. It includes the single mom who doesn't think she can get through dinner time. It includes the teen mom who is afraid to go to school because of the looks she'll get. It includes the dad who is wondering if he's less of a man because he isn't the provider he expected to be. It includes the star athlete in school who wonders if anybody would be their friend if they weren't hitting home runs, slamming dunks, or throwing touchdowns. It includes the person with more tattoos and piercing than fingers and toes. It includes the incarcerated. It includes the recently released who know they are disqualified from many positions because they just have to check yes on a certain box on a job application. It includes those in adult businesses. It includes women who were victimized and are now dealing with that and are afraid of how others may shame them. It includes that really annoying neighbor who plays their drums past midnight. It includes the person who blasts music from the car when they drive by. It includes the kids you see walking around with their pants below their butt, wondering why on earth are they like that? Why do they look like that? When they might just be doing that at a subconscious level hoping that someone will see them and still treat them as human. It includes the immigrant and 
the homeless veteran. It includes every tribe, nation, and tongue, whether we like it or not. It includes the able-bodied and disabled, including those whose body can no longer do what they used to do and might be questioning their self-worth. It includes the person who drives the fancy car who looks down on you for driving the beat-up Volvo. It includes the depressed person who has a victory just when they can manage to get out of bed. It includes the anxious and anybody with any mental health struggles. It includes the person you made fun of in high school and the person who made fun of you. It includes that hipster with the way too tight jeans which looks extraordinarily uncomfortable. It includes the goth who dresses in all black and everyone is at least a little scared to talk to. It includes that insufferable know-it-all and it includes the person who needs a few extra minutes to figure out things out. It includes the person who has never felt like they fit in, and it includes the person who appears to fit in, but is secretly terrified that people will find out they're just as messed up as the rest of us. It includes the Democrat, it includes the Republican, it includes the independent who refuses to fit in our political machine, God bless you for that. It includes the cop who kills somebody because of their skin tone, and it includes the cop who was killed just faithfully protecting their community. It includes the homeless person who people judge and believe they need to get a job without knowing their full story. Because it also includes the slumlord who perhaps put that homeless person on the street. It includes Wall Street CEOs. It includes that fast food worker who acts like they could care less about you having to wait 10 minutes for your fries. It includes your friends. It includes your enemies. It includes everyone, whether or not we're comfortable around them or not. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that we are all one in Christ Jesus, but we are not one people. We are many people created by a creative God for diversity, to live out our faith in diverse ways, worship in diverse ways, and that is what we celebrate on World Communion Sunday. It's this gospel that says it doesn't matter where you come from, what you look like or don't look like, what you've done or not done, what decisions you've made or not made, what's in your bank account or not in there, you are welcomed into the household of God. When Christ walked out of that grave, not only was death defeated, but so are our systems of division and exclusion. Second class citizenry, whatever it looks like, does not exist in God's kingdom. If we have ever been taught that hierarchy is the way of God, it's something we have to unlearn. Nobody has to come begging to the table to belong because they already have a spot saved especially for them. Nobody should have to ask, hey, am I welcome here? Because it's become clear that we already have expected them to arrive and have made room for them. This early Methodist movement that we're now still a part of today, it was a movement that spread like wildfire. But that does not mean they were popular. Because this was written by one unknown wealthy woman of the time. 
Methodist preachers whose doctrines are most repulsive and strongly tinctured with impertinence and disrespect toward their superiors and perpetually endeavoring to level all ranks and do away with all distinctions. It is monstrous to be told that you have a heart as sinful as the common wretches that crawl on the earth. This is highly offensive and insulting. She said this because John Wesley, um, in the words of former United Methodist Bishop Will Willimon, that people, no matter their lack of education or limitations of family background, no matter their poverty or addiction, could hope for genuine triumph in their battles with evil. Therefore, many poor and dispossessed were encouraged and empowered in the early Methodist society. And a number of the rich were incensed by, incensed by the implications of Wesley's perfectionism. It's at the core of who we are as Methodists. Leveling the playing field. Recognizing the sacred worth of all even when it upsets a few people. And friends, I've become convinced, unfortunately convinced sometimes, I'll admit, but convinced nonetheless that we're not practicing an inclusive faith until we're offended by who is at the table with us. So perhaps, when we consider who is going to meet us at the pearly gates, we should reconsider some things. My best guess is that our loved ones will be there, but they won't be alone. An offensive gospel commands it. And on that day, we will find room in our heart to rejoice. Amen. There are four ways to give. <laughs> you can give at the a donation in the basket at the back of the sanctuary when you come or leave. You can give by text. You can give on the Donate Now button on the website, or you can mail your donation to the church. Friends, here at this moment, we are preparing to join hands spiritually with all those around the world. And friends, this table does not belong to me, it does not belong to St. Paul United Methodist Church, it does not belong to the United Methodist Church, it belongs to the living, living and risen Jesus Christ, who welcomes all people. So you are welcome, whether you're online or here with us, to participate um, and partake of what we call a holy sacrament, where God does something extraordinary through ordinary things like a wafer and juice. And yes, I'm well aware that for most of you who have the communion elements here, those are remarkably ordinary things. And yet God is still here. So friends, will you please join me in our communion liturgy, either on the screen or in the, hand, the handout that was given to you. With Christians around the world, we come to the festival of love. with believers from every continent on earth, come to the festival of grace. With the whole body of Christ, come to the festival of life. Source of unity and strength, in our longing for wholeness, we reach out to your Son, whose touch heals our brokenness, in our yearning for community, we take hold the promise of Christ, whose life and love binds us together as one. From lives of separation and distrust, knit us into one family, 
where all are welcomed and honored. As we share the bread of life and drink the cup of salvation, forge us anew as one people of faith. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are true to who you are and reveal to us the glories of your presence. You are a God of love who speaks against oppression and injustice. You are a God of grace who asks us to forgive those who are blind to their privilege, even as you invite the world to learn from you. You are the creator God who weaves the beauty of diversity into something fresh and new, the garment of understanding and wonder. You call us to follow you out of the familiar and comfortable and to live by faith, calling upon your holy name and trusting in the power of your grace. You invite us to be like Jonah and preach your word in Nineveh, bringing salvation to our historical oppressors. You move our hearts to say with Ruth, wherever you live, that is where I will live. You will be family. Your God will be mine. I will even die for you, buried next to you. Because you show mercy to every nation and people upon the earth, because you speak every language and delight in every culture, we join in your praise with all the earth. Because you have embraced people from every continent, have walked with all our ancestors, continuing to hear your praise, even in forgotten languages that are sung continually around your throne, we join in their headless praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, and Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Leaving all that was familiar in heaven, Jesus was born into the people and culture of Israel. Jesus was taught the language and the traditions of his family. Jesus worshipped in the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus came first to the lost sheep of Israel, people of his race, people of his culture. Jesus also shared your grace with Roman oppressors who lynched his people. Jesus entered into deep theological discussions with a Samaritan woman, breaking cultural taboos and stereotypes. Jesus responded to the needs of a Syrophoenician woman going against the deeply ingrained prejudices that his society had taught him. Jesus realized that you, O oh God, loved the world so much that you wanted everyone to believe, even if it meant personal sacrifice. When culture dictated that the least important was to wash feet, Jesus broke with social convention, left the seat of honor, took off his robe, and with a towel and basin in his hands, knelt and washed the feet of the one who would betray him. Washed the feet of the one who would deny him not once but three times, and the feet of those who would desert him to save their own lives. Jesus invites us to do the same. As an expression of culture, Jesus took the bread and remembered the historical struggles of his people and shared it with everyone, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. And again, as an expression of culture, Jesus took the cup and remembered the historical struggles of his people and shared it with everyone, saying, Drink with me, all of you, for this is my love, my blood poured out for you as a witness to the divine covenant of forgiveness with you and the whole world. Out of a specific culture, Jesus works cross-culturally to bring salvation to the whole world. Jesus came not just to save his own people, but all peoples. Jesus came not just to save his own economic class, but those of any class. Jesus came not to save those of his own gender identity, but those of every gender identity. We have testified that this mystery of salvation found is Jesus Christ is for all when we say, 
Say it with me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of grace and glory, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Bless us and name us as your covenant people. Lay claims to our lives through this holy sacrament and sustain us with your grace as we walk the journey of faith. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And you may now open your container, take the wafer, the body of Christ given in love for you. Take and eat. In the blood of Christ, given for forgiveness once and for all, take and drink. Friends, we are ordinary people, <laughs> but we worship an extraordinary God, a God who has met us today and reminded us that we are all joined together in the great tapestry of God's creative world. Let us continue to worship. Friends, as a reminder, um, not only are we united in by taking communion, in the United Methodist Church, we are also united in mission. And if you wish to give to the special offering, um, the World Communion Sunday offering um, primarily goes toward um, racial and ethnic higher education, equipping future generations of um, servants of Christ and clergy so that the gospel can continue to be heard across all languages. Um, you can give, um, if you're a smartphone person, there is that little insert in your uh, program, in your bulletin. And if you'd like a regular envelope, those are on the back table as well. Um, United Methodist Church, we recognize we are all one body together. Even as we join with those across the world, United Methodist Church, as imperfect as we are, we do that pretty well through connectionalism. So friends, remember that today all are included at the table no matter who they are or aren't, whether they look like us or not, whether they think like us or not, God has welcomed them. God has a special place for them. And may we always remember that God, lo God loves all people, and there is not a single gosh darn thing you can do about that. Amen, friends. Go in peace.